It had been a slow Sunday afternoon back in 1999 when the boys and I received an alarm through the fire department dispatcher that had been received by telephone and had a lot of details in it. So that suggested that we had a real fire and we responded with urgency. Besides, we were bored. You know, we're kind of, kind of action people, so we were glad to be out and racing to what could be a serious fire. We got to the five-story tenement and I raced up to the fourth floor and there was Kate standing in the doorway, blonde hair, blue eyes, wearing a yellow sundress. She was really cute. Not a puff of smoke in sight, but there was an odor of smoke. So my boys set about trying to find the uh, origin of the odor of smoke. Uh, uh, they, they didn't need my lieutenanting skills for such a, an easy chore, so I kind of hung around and chatted Kate up. Kate was a massage therapist, and the sheets that she used uh, in her massage practice were infused with body oil, and she had just washed her sheets uh, and dried them, put them in a sack, and cinched the sack shut. And what happened is the sheets were a victim to spontaneous combustion. Kate and I kind of spontaneously combusted as well. <laughs> we wound up dating for just a few months, but Kate was also a yoga teacher. And like most men I know that have done yoga, we go to yoga because our wives or girlfriends make us go. I was no exception. Now, I had been fit and athletic most of my life, but yoga came along at just the right time. I was 49 years old, and, you know, the old style of working out was starting to, you know, take a toll on my joints and bones. I was doing, you know, high-impact stuff and weightlifting and things like that, and yoga kind of cured those injuries. And, you know, so the yoga practice, you know, really sang my song. And five years later, after I had retired from the fire department, I found myself in Los Angeles at a nine week training to become a Bikram yoga teacher, which I still do today. One of the reasons I continue to practice or I'm trying to get back to a level of high fitness after you know, almost two years of being lazy uh, post COVID. And that's, uh, where I'm at today, and the reason I'm I'm still working hard to keep a level of fitness is because of just the energy and the, and the vitality I have in in my life at 72 years of age. This is um, in this beautiful lake is in Monroe, New York, where my daughter has a home. I stayed last night after spending a very busy day in New York City in Manhattan with my other daughter and her twin six-year-olds. Um, you know and. Uh, I've driven from Pennsylvania to the city and now up here to Monroe, which is about an hour and a half north of New York. And now I'm driving back to Pennsylvania. It takes a lot of energy to enjoy your life. And I am enjoying my life. And part of that is my yoga practice. But there's some, you know, much uh, deeper uh, motivations uh, for, uh, for me to continue to pursue the level of fitness and, and serenity that I get out of the practice. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. An hour and 45 minute drive south of Monroe, where I shot the video this morning, brings you to Allentown, Pennsylvania, and the Helfrich Spring Grist Mill. That was built by a guy named Peter Grimm in 1807. Interesting place, this America. But I'm here in Allentown, not just to do some sightseeing, I'm staying at my daughter's house. She lives uh, about a 30 mile ride north of here. But an old friend of mine that I met when I took my Bikram yoga teacher training, James Pfeiffer, opened up a hot yoga studio here not long ago. And I'm here to whip my old butt back in shape. In the nine week training at Bikram's teacher training in Los Angeles, 
the trainees, like myself, were required to do two classes a day, one in the morning and one in the evening. Now, this was in a room with 250 trainees in it, and it was heated to over 105 degrees. That would be about 41 degrees Celsius. And the teachers that led the class really pressed the envelope in trying to make the class as difficult as possible to push the trainees to, you know, to their limit. And they succeeded. About four weeks into the training, I was in a class, it was an evening class, and it was toward the end of the class, and I was struggling. I was really working hard to get through the class and not give up. And in one posture toward the end of the class where you're seated and doing a stretch, trying to stretch toward your feet, turn your upper body toward your feet, I was grunting and snorting and just crying and angry at the whole frickin' world. And a remarkable thing happened. In May of 2005, when I was at this training, struggling with this anger just coming up, and I was, you know, I, I wasn't expressing it at anybody in particular. It was just something that I was feeling, and it was just bubbling up from inside, and I didn't even know what it was that I was angry about. I was just trying to ignore it. But remember, this is 2005. This is four years after the 9-11 tragedy that killed 20 personal friends of mine, 343 co-workers, and thousands of neighbors. We were all pretty pissed back then, and I had internalized all of that anger. And during this yoga class, four weeks into Bikram Yoga teacher training, when I was snorting and grunting on the sweaty hot floor of the LA yoga training studio, I forgave the people who killed my friends. Now that wasn't an intention. It wasn't something I was even thinking about. The only way I could describe it is that forgiveness manifested itself through the physical practice of yoga. It was just a remarkable event, and it's been permanent. The people that killed my friends are all dead as well. Maybe that made it easier. I don't even think about it. I've just let it go. And while it's not gone completely from my memory or my feelings, it doesn't own me the way that it used to. It's a, that's a pretty remarkable thing. And it was at that point that I decided to actually teach the yoga because I had just gone to the training to have the experience of, you know, working hard for nine weeks and getting myself in good shape. And since I graduated from that training, I have been teaching Bikram Yoga because there's something remarkable about the practice. As I said, there's a serenity available from within this practice of yoga that's just kind of hard to describe. The story I just told you, I can't describe it any other way. Forgiveness manifested itself through the practice of yoga. It's quite a remarkable thing. In the 1970s, Billy Joel wrote a song about Allentown. We're living here in Allentown. And he sang about how they were shutting all the factories down. Well, a friend James, my buddy from Bikram Yoga teacher training, has repurposed one of the factories into a yoga studio. Let's go in and say hello to James. So, James has made a beautiful space here for practicing yoga, and I met James in uh, 2005. That's right. And he's, right. A, he's an intrepid uh, yoga teacher for, let me make it almost 17 years now, right? Yeah. Pretty yes. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's the tragedy of, Miss, of, of James, is that he uh, does Thai massage, and he's never been to Thailand. That's right. you got to come yeah. and visit. Definitely. So, the title of this yoga is going to be something, uh, the, I'm sorry, the title of this video is going to be something about who does better with the girls, firemen or yoga teachers? Mm, wow. <laughs> Given that I'm both, I thought I could be an expert on it. Yeah, but. actually, you come from both perspectives. That's great. So what I'm going to bring up is uh, something a little bit controversial. One of the things that I adhered to when we got the Bikram Yoga teacher training, I mean, it was a nice environment for a single guy. I think there were, what, 250 people in our class? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, about 220 of them were women. Yes. Yeah. And of the uh, 30 other men, 10 were married and 10 were gay. <laughs> so that was like 200... 220 to 10. Yeah. Nice odds, right? Yes. But if you recall, Bikram said uh, he didn't want anybody fooling around in the training, right? Yes. 
I took that advice. I thought, you know, that wasn't the purpose I went there. I mean, besides, I was kind of old for most of the girls. They were a lot younger than me. I was 52, four, 54 at the time. And uh, uh, so I, I, I didn't fool around. You know, I made it all about practicing yoga. Yeah. Yeah. And it's too bad Bikram didn't take his own advice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Physician heal myself. <laughs> That's right. So here's the thing. A lot of you already know about Bikram Chowdhury, the guy who, whose name is attached to this style of yoga. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about him. If you want to know about him, Netflix did a really good documentary on him. Go watch the Netflix documentary. All I'll say is that the system that he attached his name to is just plain remarkable. I mean, it, it, it's a... Uh, yeah, you, you, you got to do it. And if you're anywhere near Allentown, Pennsylvania, come to uh, Allentown Yoga Works. It's online, Allentown Yoga Works. Allyogaworks.com. All yoga. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Firehouse was a relentlessly masculine environment. All men, competitive, with a great sense of humor, and we took real good care of each other as well. It was a great place to work. I loved it. So after 20 years of working in a relentlessly masculine environment, I found myself in the yoga business, which is about 70% women. And it's different. You know, it's a, it, they're competitive as well, but in a different way. And women that go to yoga aren't looking to get hit on, especially from the yoga teacher. Now, I dated Kate, the woman who introduced me to yoga, but I met her through the fire department. I did date another woman named Carol, who was actually my teacher. I met her in Northampton, Massachusetts, when I was practicing there, and I wound up buying uh, the Bikram Yoga Northampton from Carol. And we did date for a while as well. She's a good lass. She's still teaching yoga in Butte, Montana. We stay in touch a little bit on social media. But yeah, they're gonna answer the question posed by the title of the video. Did way better as a fireman. <laughs> you know, because you don't want to be hitting on the girls in the studio. If you get that reputation, it's gonna it's gonna ruin your business. Uh, and it's just not the right thing to do. So uh, so yeah, that that kind of answers that question. But if you stay fit good that'll help you out <laughs> so i just finished the class in allentown and i'm feeling good i'm feeling fine you know after you take a class you tend to you know just feel mellow i once heard a psychologist define um, an emotion as a physical event to which we affix a label well come and do yoga we'll give you loads of physical events pick good labels thanks for watching i'll see you the next time